feel for a beautiful smile, the life of Riley for laughs. Teal, T-E-E-L, Teal, the amazing liquid dentifrice. That's it, T-E-E-L. Teal, the amazing liquid dentifrice, brings you the life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. (laughs) Remember, friends, for beautiful smiles, it's T-E-E-L, Teal. And just for laughs, it's R-I-L-E-Y, Riley, in the life of Riley. A good many of Chester A. Riley's headaches arise from the fact that he takes such good care of everybody else's business. Even Riley's mother, who is here in California for a short visit, is not exempt from his meddling. Our story opens with Riley and his 16-year-old daughter, Babs. No use, Babs. You can't have another lipstick. You've got a lipstick. But, Daddy, all the kids are getting the new lipstick. It's called Tantalizing Red. The ad says, Today... Tantalizing red lips, a sign of sophisticated beauty. That's today, huh? <laughs> well, in my day, girls didn't need no lipstick. They just ate hamburgers with lots of ketchup. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't sophisticated, but it sure tasted better. Don't be an old fogey, Daddy. Nowadays, all girls use makeup. I know a girl that don't use makeup. My mother... You don't see her putting paint on her lips and shellacking her claws with red varnish. <laughs> well, after all, Daddy, Grandma's 60 years old. Yeah, and getting prettier every day. <laughs> uh, I- I'm in here, Mom. Just take a look at your Grandma if you want to see a girl that don't buy her good looks in a paint store. Oh, Riley, your mother has something to tell you. Yes, sister. Guess what? Wait, Mom. Stand just where you are. Bad, ain't she beautiful? Just like a painting by Whistler's mother. <laughs> oh, go on with your big ape. Listen, I just had a Don't letter. talk, Mom. Just let me feed my eyes on a real pretty <laughs> woman. <laughs> yes, sir, I'm proud that I look just like you. You don't say. Mm-hmm. My problem is that I look like you. <laughs> you see Grandma's smooth complexion, bed, And look at her hair, white like snow. Well, Mother Riley never notices my hair. <laughs> Maybe it's because when I washed it last night, I put some extra blue in, in the water. <laughs> Mom, you didn't. There, you see, even Grandma has her little tricks, Daddy. Mom, I'm shocked. The next thing I know, you'll be wearing bobby socks. <laughs> Remember, son, when a woman stops trying to look her best, she's got to expect her boyfriends will leave her. For someone else. Mom, that's no reason for you to wear blue hair. (laughs) You ain't got no boyfriend. Oh, is that so? You see this letter? It just came. From an old beau of mine. What nerve. Writing a married woman after she's married 40 years. Especially when her husband's away at sea for two years. Three years. Poor pop. Can't turn his back for three years before his wife gets a letter from a wolf. <laughs> Don't you read it, Mom. I did read it. And guess what? This old same of mine is coming here to see me tomorrow. Nothing doing. Any old flame come around here, I'm blowing them out. <laughs> no, you won't. You'll be as nice as pie to him. Mom, think what you're saying. You're married. Write and tell him you got a big overgrown son. He knows all about you, but he likes me anyway. <laughs> now listen, Mom. I'm head of this house. Riley. And... I mean next to you, Peg. <laughs> I won't stand for my mother and fight me. Riley, old... something tells me you better mind your own business. But I... always trying to run everybody. I'm your mother, and I have none of your lips. But mother, you Jay... down. <laughs> I give up. It's a losing fight. You, Mr. Riley, 
It's your neighbor, Waldo Benny. Oh, uh, come in here in the garage. How are you, Waldo? Oh, my aching back. <laughs> Trouble with your wife again, Waldo? She's always insulting me. This morning she called me a pinhead. Said my head was the size of an atom. And then she tried to split it. <laughs> well, I got woman trouble, too. My mother. No, Mr. Wright. Yeah. Not that sweet little white-haired lady. Don't let that hair fool you. <laughs> On her head, she may be white-haired, but in her heart, she's still a redhead. <laughs> Tomorrow, she's stepping out with a strange man. Oh, no. I can't believe it. It's true, but don't get me wrong. She don't mean no harm. Oh, of course not. No. She's probably just dazzled. Uh, tell me, has your dear mother any money of her own? Well, I think so. Once I noticed a hole in her mattress, so I peeked in and there was George Washington staring at me. <laughs> ah, so that's what the scoundrel's after. Take my advice, Mr. Riley. Send for your father immediately. I can't, Waldo. He's out in the ocean sailing around on this tramp steamer. He's the head tramp. <laughs> You know, the captain. Yes. Mr. Riley, he's the only one who can save your mother. Do you know the name of the port your father last visited? Well, last week I got this here postcard from him. It don't say the port, just the street address. See? 150 West Longitude. <laughs> well, that just means that he's in the middle of the ocean. Uh, if only Papa was here. Oh, my. It's the same old story. An absent husband, a lonely wife, a slick scoundrel with smooth talk. <laughs> oh, Father, why don't you come home? Yes, a sad story with the usual ending. Divorce. Divorce? Well, oh, gee, I never thought... Divorce? That's awful. Especially for the children. Uh, what about the children? Well, the parents share the custody. The child spends six months with the mother and six months with the father. Oh, well, that's terrible. My father's on the ocean all year. <laughs> I get seasick. Waldo, well, I've got to do something to keep my mom and pop together. Well, uh, I have an idea. Now, uh, try and remind her of your father. Uh, leave some of his things around in her room. Uh, little items with a sentimental value. And that'll remind her of their years of happiness together. Yeah. yeah, I know what. I got an old shaving mug of Poppy. I'll put that on her dresser. And Pop's old corn cob pipe. When she smells that, it's bound to bring tears to her eyes. <laughs> That's it, Mr. Riley. Now, you must save your mother from this terrible fate. I'll do it, Waldo. I'll do anything I have to do to protect the sanctity of the home. <laughs> Mother, maybe you better tell Riley who your letter's from. I will not, Peg. I was going to tell him. But then he got sassy and practically accused his own mother of... Well, I'm going to teach him a lesson. And don't you tell him either. And don't tell the children. They'd blab. <laughs> well, it's your affair, Mother Riley. I'll stay neutral. The nerve of them suspecting me of shenanigans. Any boy but Chester would know that the man who's coming to see me is his own father... It's a good thing my mother's out shopping. Now, let's see, Waldo. Oh, first we'll hang up this swell picture of my papa. Lucky I found it in the attic. There. My, your father's got a nice face. Yeah. When your dear mother sees that picture, she's bound to break down. Now, uh, uh, what do we do with your father's mug? Well, we just leave it. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean this shaving mug. Uh, 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 put it in Mama's dresser drawer. Oh, yes, all right. It isn't nice to read other people's letters when they start off, dearest Mabel. Well, that must be the letter Mama got from this wolf. Well, of course, I didn't read it at uh, all. Uh, uh, that's good. It ain't nice to read other people's mail. And besides, she's my mother, so I'll read it. I'm only reading it for her own good. Exactly. 
I'm only listening for her own good. <laughs> My dearest Mabel, now after all these long years, I'll be holding you in my arms again. You are still my beautiful wild rose, and pretty soon now your honeybee will come buzzing around again. <laughs> Only a skunk would write a thing like that. <laughs> your dear father will thank us for this. Feed some more. You'll never know, Sugar Plum. Mr. Riley, somebody's coming. Huh? Oh, it's Mom. Here, take the letter. No, you take no, it. No, you take it. No, you take it. Oh. <laughs> What's this? What are you doing in my room, Mr. Binney? I, your, uh, well, your son invited me. Who? Chester, what are you doing in my room? Waldo invited me. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean uh, is this your room, Mom? Well, let's go, Waldo. Just a minute, Chester. What's that in your hand? My letter. You've been reading my letter. No, no, I didn't read it. You came in too quick. <laughs> I mean, I just saw the beginning, Mom. Well... Read my private mail of all the low, snooping things I ever saw. Well, uh, I really must tear myself away. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> yeah, me too. I... Stay where you are, Chester. Yes, Mama. Now you look here. Wait, Mom. Be before you say anything more, just look at that picture on the wall. What picture? Holy smoke! What on earth is that? <laughs> Mama, that's Papa. That's the man you're married to. Well, for heaven's sake. I thought he looked familiar. <laughs> Look, Mom, you've been my mother ever since I was born. <laughs> Look at Pop's picture up there. Look at his dear old face. <clears throat> Blow the dust off him. He looks as if he was lost in the fog. Mom, just look at that face. That forehead, so, so strong. That nose, so, so intelligent. And those eyes, one on each side of his nose. And his ears, one on each side of his head. Mom, that's the face you took, for better or worse. That's the man you promised to love, honor, and obey. Ah, the Chester. It isn't what a woman says with her lips. It's what's in her heart to come. Mom, you mean you didn't mean it when you married Pop? And you stayed married for 40 years? I might as well tell you, Chester. There's only been one man in the heart for 43 years. You mean this old wife that's coming to see you Saturday. Don't you be calling your... He's no low life. The man who's coming to see me Saturday is the only man I ever really loved. Oh, Pop. <laughs> Forty years of married life, and in the end, all you're getting out of it is me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pop, it wasn't worth it. <laughs> Just brought you the first act of the life of Riley, and we'll return to Riley in just a moment. Meanwhile, this is Ken Carpenter. I hope you'll start using teal to clean your teeth before it's too late, before you discover ugly cavities at the gum line of your teeth. Yes, cavities. Cavities ground in by daily brushings with toothpastes or powders containing harsh abrasives. And don't think you're safe from such damage. Most people risk ground-in cavities every time they brush their teeth. Because, you see, out of every ten adults, eight have receding gums. And when gums recede, parts of the teeth are exposed, which are 25 times softer than tooth enamel. Yes, 25 times softer. And those softer parts are easily damaged by daily brushings with toothpaste or powder containing harsh abrasives. So, you see, the chances are eight in ten. You are risking those ground-in cavities daily, unless the dentifrice you use contains no such abrasives. Well, folks, teal alone, of all leading dentifrices, contains no abrasives. That's right. Teal cleans teeth with a patented ingredient, without abrasives. Therefore, teal protects your teeth from ground-in gum line cavities as no other leading dentifrice can. The teal way takes one extra minute a week to make teeth look their best safely. Just follow directions on the package. How you'll enjoy the tangy flavor of teal, its refreshing aftertaste. 
So be sure to ask for T-E-E-L, Teal, the liquid dentifrice. And now back to the life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. We left Riley stunned by his mother's statement that the man who's coming to see her tonight is the one love of her life. Actually, the man is Riley's own father, who's been away at sea for three years. But to teach Riley not to jump to conclusions and meddle in other people's affairs, his mother is holding back that important fact. Right now, Riley has a plan to make his mother see the error of her ways. But, Pop, I don't get it. Why do you want to sing that song to Grandma? Look, Junior, it's time you learned that if you don't ask me questions, you won't get a foolish answer. <laughs> you play that song and sing with me and Waldo like we rehearsed. Do you think the song will do the trick, Mr. Riley? Oh, I don't know, but I want to keep reminding Mama about Papa before it's too late. She's in the kitchen, so we've got to sing loud. Go ahead, Junior. is for a father who's a great guy. A is all the stuff he done for mom. T is for the touch he's always good for. H is for a husband, not a bum. E that stands forever, he will be true. R is wrong, he's never done to you. Put them all together, they spell Papa. <laughs> oh, Mama, take him back, please do. Oh, for heaven's sake, sister, will you stop that crazy yowling? <laughs> <laughs> Yowler? Mom, didn't you even hear the words? Don't you feel the sediment? They're the silliest words I ever heard in all my born days. Now stop this racket. I've got work to do and you're giving me a headache. Waldo, it's no use trying to soften her up. we got to figure out how to keep this wolf away from our door. What wolf? Uh, never mind. Go out and play, Junior. There's some things it's better for a young boy not to know. Aw, oh, can't I stay and get the inside dirt on Grandma's new heartthrob? <laughs> Junior! Oh, okay. I'm going. I'm going. Waldo, there ain't much time left. Ain't you got some idea to keep this guy away? Well, we might prepare a booby trap. We could rig up a thing so that when he steps on your welcome mat and presses the doorbell, he'll get electrocuted. <laughs> hey, that sounds good. We... No, 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 we can't do that. Our electric bill is high enough already. <laughs> Oh, think of something else, Waldo. Well, I've got a book full of ideas for booby traps. I'll go home and get it. Yeah, well, hurry up. There ain't much time left. Meanwhile, I'll lie down and try to figure out how to mess up this guy when he gets here. Oh, I see who it is, Waldo, on your way out. All right, Mr. Riley. Oh, hello. Who is it, Waldo? It's your friend, Mr. Odell, the undertaker. The friendly undertaker. <laughs> Greetings, Riley. You're looking fine. Very natural. <laughs> Oh, uh, hello, Digger. Flat on your back, I see. <laughs> Good. Relaxing is an excellent thing, but you're not doing it properly. I'm not? What do you mean? I'll show you. Here, let me fold your arm. <laughs> Never mind, Digger, I'm getting up. I... <laughs> Riley, I can see something is troubling you. Yeah. Digger, why can't married people get along without trouble? Because a man always insists on marrying a woman. <laughs> At times, they're unreasonable creatures. I remember when I first got married, my wife, Lily Fern, objected to my digging in the garden. Uh, that's just like a woman. Makes a fuss when a man wants to plant a few vegetables. Oh, it wasn't vegetable. <laughs> You see, at the time, I was taking a course in the Mortician's Academy, and they give you homework. <laughs> Tell me, Riley, did you have a little tip with your dear wife? Oh, no, 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 it ain't my wife, it's, it's my mother. Ah, mother. Silver threads among the gold, sitting in a rocker, crocheting antimacassars, sweet Simple and serene. I adore mothers. 
They're so gay. Uh, sometimes they're too gay. Digger, you won't believe this, but there's a certain party who's trying to make time with my 60-year-old mother. It's terrible. I know just how you feel. I remember when father expanded his undertaking business and got an assistant. The assistant tried to win mother away from him. Oh, what did your father do? Plenty. He said to him, look here, you scad. If you don't leave my wife alone, you'll stop being my assistant and become my customer. <laughs> it nearly yeah, but... scared the life out of him. Yeah, but my poor father's thousands of miles away. Then, Riley, it's up to you to do something. You bet I will. I'll tear him apart. No, 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 Riley. In dealing with your mother's futile, dignity is the key word. You must see this rotter before he gets here and reason with him. Lure him to some rendezvous. Yeah. Yeah, that's an idea. And I know where. Waldo's house next door. You see, Waldo's house is 1315. Mine is 1313. All I got to do is switch numbers, and when he comes looking for my address, he walks right into our trap. Good. And then I'll lay him out. <laughs> Babbly. Uh, when I get through telling this home wrecker off, he'll wish the earth would open up and swallow him. Riley, the earth never opens up to swallow you. You have to help it. Believe me. <laughs> Okay, fellas. Everything's set. I switched the numbers. Excellent, Good. Riley. Now, listen. This home wrecker will show up any minute. Now, you know what to do, fellas. I'll be hiding in the kitchen. When he comes in the front door, you grab him. And then I make an entrance and face him with my face. That should... <laughs> that should frighten him. I'd better put out the lights now. My, it's dark. I like the dark. Listen. Listen, I hear somebody coming up the walk. It's him. I'll get in the back now. Remember now, fellas, no rough stuff. Oh, no. If I hit him, I might hurt him. <laughs> Ready, Waldo? I'm opening the door. Good evening, mister. Step in. Mr. Babu, don't you recognize a bosun's mate, junior grade? <laughs> Where's Mrs. Riley? Ahoy, Mabel! Not so loud. Come inside. She ain't in the sick bay, is she? <laughs> Give us a sounding. Is Mrs. Riley aboard or ain't she? Lock the door, Waldo. Avast there! Now we got him. God who? Me? Why, you barnacle bottom scupper wash, you trying to sing? Hi, me! Lie down, sir. I mean, uh, sit down. <laughs> Go on, get in this chair. Cast off. Take your grappling hooks off of me. You buy the great horn spoon off. <clears throat> Oh, he broke my nose. Ah, foul in your figure, at, eh? He... Now for you, you pale-faced porpoise. He... How do you like this? No, oh, he broke my high hands. I'll hang you from a yard arm, you scurvy sea scum. Oh, help, help, let me out of here. Get out of my way, Waldo, you coward. Good day to you, sir. <laughs> Come back, you swabs and bright white men. Tell us, tell us, I said no rust stuff, you... Papa! Ahoy, Chester! I run into some foul weather. Papa, when did you get home? Didn't your mother tell you I was making pork tonight? No, she... I... Where is she? Mabel! <laughs> Hit the deck! <laughs> she ain't here, Papa. She's next door in my house. And what are you doing here in this... Dead fall. <laughs> Come on, let's weigh anchor. Now, oh, wait, Papa. I'm all mixed up. I was expecting another guy, and we set a trap for him. Trap? You mean them two war frats was friends of yours? Yeah, but, Papa, this other fellow was trying to cut you out with Mom. He wrote her a mushy letter about, about holding her in his arms, and he said he was her hunting bee. What? <laughs> That's what I wrote her. <laughs> So, you've been reading my private mail, have you? Oh, you, you mean it was you? You mean Mama ain't going to divorce you? Of course not. What a revolting development this is. <laughs> now I'm beginning to get my bearings. 
Chester, come forward. Uh, now, Pop, I, I was only trying to look after your interest. I can look out for myself. But for suspecting your old lady of flirting, I'm going to give you a keel hauling. <laughs> Papa, Papa, don't look at me like that. Papa, what are you taking off your belt for? Chester, leave your bow across that chair and let me see your stern. <laughs> No, Papa. Don't spank me. I'm going on 39. Don't spank me. Don't spank... Mama! The Rileys will be back in half a minute. Millions have switched from toothpaste or powder to teal and have thoroughly enjoyed the change. You, too, will like teal's refreshing flavor, its lively action. But most important, teal protects teeth from cavities, cavities ground in at the gum line by daily use of toothpaste or powders containing harsh abrasives. Teal cleans teeth without abrasives, avoids the risk of such cavities. T-E-E-L, teal, the safe liquid dentifrice. Listen, Chester. Uh, I sure did, Mom. If you didn't, I can still give you that keel hauling you talked me out of, you big barrel of bilge water. <laughs> Gee, Pop, you, you talk like you don't like me anymore. Oh, stow it. I like you as much as ever. You're fine-looking boy. Kind of son any father would be proud of. You just happen to be a little short on brains. <laughs> Now, how can you say that, Papa? Why, why, everybody who knows me says my head is my strongest point. <laughs> Barker and Gamble, makers of Teal, the amazing liquid dentifrice, invite you to be their guest next week to hear the life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. William Bendix appears by arrangement with Hal Roach. The Life of Riley is produced for Teal by Irving Brecker and is directed by Don Bernard. Music by Lou Coslow. Mrs. Riley is Paula Winslow. Digger O'Dell is John Brown. Riley's mother is Jane Morgan. Junior is Scotty Beckett. Babs is Sharon Douglas. And Waldo is Dink Trout. Riley's father, Captain Riley, was played by Henry Morgan, who appeared to the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of the Technicolor picture, Lever to Heaven. This is Ken Carpenter on behalf of Teal, inviting you to listen again next week. And remember, for laughs, it's R-I-L-E-Y, Riley. And for lovely smiles, it's T-E-E-L, Teal. Teal, the amazing liquid dentifrice, protects teeth beautifully. It's a washing miracle for silk, nylon, woolen, dishes. What are you talking about? Dress. I'll spell it. D-R-E-F-T, dress. Yes, ladies, and dress spells faster, brighter, safer cleaning than any suds before in history. Why, dress keeps my colored things so bright and gay looking, I can hardly believe my eyes. My lingerie, nylons, woolens, all stay beautiful as a dream. And dishes... Say, Dreft makes dishes shine without wiping. You see, Dreft's amazing suds rinse clean and clear. Leave no dulling film the way all soaps do. There's no soap fading. Look for Dreft in the bright green package. Dreft, the amazing suds discovery that brings you faster, brighter, safer cleaning than any suds before in history. That's D-R-E-F-T, Dreft. Get Dreft today. Listen for the life of Riley next week, same time, brought to you by Teal, the amazing liquid dentifrice. And now, stay tuned to this station for Truth or Consequences. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.